QuickBooks Online 2023 Progress Invoicing Overview. The problem Progress Invoicing solves. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file. We started up in a prior presentation. We also have open in a separate incognito window, the free sample company file. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using incognito window, which you can open if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser, new incognito window, then typing into the search engine QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the option that has intuit.com in the URL because Intuit is the owner of QuickBooks. The sample company being useful because it allows us to test things out in the sample company while not distorting the data in our test company file as we work through a practice problem. It's also useful to toggle back and forth between the accounting and business view. In our example, the test file will be in the accounting view. The sample company will be in the business view. If you want to toggle between the two views, you can go to the cog up top and switch the view down below. Now we want to think about progress invoicing, which obviously has something to do with an invoice. Invoice is being found in the new button. There is our invoice, the form typically used, the form usually sent out to clients and customers to request payment, usually to request payment for work that was done in the past. However, anytime we are requesting payment, whether it be for work done in the past, work currently being done, or work that will be done in the future, it's tempting to use an invoice because the invoice is the form that's easiest to convert to actually receiving the payment. It's the best form for requesting a payment. The problem comes up that uh, it might not line up with our revenue recognition concepts and principles. And that's what we have to kind of look at and consider when we think about the problem of progress invoicing. Now, if you do progress invoicing, you need to turn on progress invoicing. You can do that by going to the cog up top we go into our settings on the left hand side we're going to go into the sales tab and then scroll down to the progress invoicing it's not generally on by default so you got to toggle the progress invoicing on and then say save and then we're going to say done now normally the process when you have a progress invoicing type of system will be that you're going to be entering an estimate and then you're going to be basically billing for part of that estimate uh, in, the, in the future, and that's gonna be setting up your progress invoicing structure. So let's just think about the accrual kind of problems with a progress invoicing system. The actual progress invoicing tool in QuickBooks is quite straightforward and easy to use. However, the concepts from accounting that, that come into play as to why you need to use that system get more complex. So let's think about when you might need a progress inventory kind of uh, progress invoicing system. Let's jump on over to a flowchart. Now this flowchart is just a screenshot of the QuickBooks desktop homepage. We're using QuickBooks Online, but this has a nice flowchart and we just wanna think about the normal flow of the forms and when and what type of accounting system and what kind of business a progress invoicing tool might be used. So we're focused on the revenue, sales, accounts receivable, or a customer cycle. At the end of that cycle, we usually expect to receive money, our checking account going up for goods and services that we provided. Now, if you have a very easy kind of system, you just do gig work or something like that, then we might be able to just record revenue with a deposit form, possibly with the bank feeds when we receive payment. 
Uh, but you can only do that if you're in the kind of industry that will lend itself to that easy kind of system. Or we might have a cash register type of situation, in which case we would be thinking of like a create sales receipt type of form, which basically records the transaction when it happens. So if you have a restaurant or something like that, then you're going to be recording the sale when it happens. The work has been performed at the same point in time that you got paid. And usually you can't just use the bank feeds to record the deposits in that system because you're going to have to collect all the payments for the day and then group them together by credit card payments or cash payments and then make a deposit into the bank. Then we have a system where we're going to have to invoice the clients. Normally, when we invoice the clients, it's because we're going to do the work first and then we're going to be invoicing the client and we're going to get paid uh, at a future point in time. So we're forced to do that by the industry. So if we're in a law firm or an accounting firm, the industry usually dictates that we do the work first. We might have to track hours or what we actually did so that we can then bill the client. And, and then when we bill the client, the invoice will increase accounts receivable. The other side will go to, to uh, revenue. And then the, the invoice will also hopefully make the facilitation of the receipt of the payment as easy as possible. So the client can then pay us. And then when we get paid, we reduce accounts receivable and either put it into the bank or we put it into undeposited funds and then we uh, make the deposit. So that's a normal invoicing process where we do the work first. And oftentimes it's more of a job cost kind of system, a specialized type of system where we, where we don't know exactly what we're selling, right? Because it's, it's not all the same in nature. There's some customization involved in it. Now, then when you get to longer term projects, when you get to bigger projects, then oftentimes you're going to make an estimate. So I'm going to make an estimate of what I think it's going to cost. I don't really know because maybe it's a construction progress or, or maybe it's a legal, uh, a legal issue that's going to take a long time or an accounting issue or a tax thing that's going to take a long time. So we'll make an estimate and then uh, we're going to invoice after we do the work oftentimes. But if it's going to be a long term process, we're going to be doing construction, for example, for many months is the classic example but it could also be in a legal case. It's gonna take a long time. So therefore we, we might have to bill kind of as we go for this one kind of uh, issue in a, like a job cost type of system, same for uh, like a tax type of system. So in that case, the question is, I'm gonna possibly be invoicing as I go. So now I'm gonna be requesting payments even though the job is not completed. So we have a revenue recognition problem. The invoice is a great tool for us to basically uh, collect money from the customer because the invoice can be sent out and it's the easiest tool to convert the invoice to receipt of the payment. But if you've got a longer term job, then the question is, should you be recording revenue at the point in time that you issue the invoice because you haven't actually completed the job? Or in some cases, you might actually be, be requesting money before you start the job as a down payment on the on the job. So so we have this couple things that we need to be tracking. One is the invoice is a good tool to request payment so we can track payment of the money, the invoice requesting payment, easy facilitation of the payment to be converted to to uh, to cash and we track the accounts receivable so that we can follow up on the payments that have not yet uh, been received with the invoice. But then we have the revenue recognition issue. If the invoice was sent out for, for work that had been done in the past, uh, then, then we should recognize the revenue on an accrual concept basis when we issue the invoice and that's normal and that will work perfectly. But if we're not going to do the work until the future or we are currently doing the work, then the idea would be, well, maybe we, we shouldn't be recognizing the revenue at the point in time we send out the invoice because we haven't yet, we haven't yet done the work. We haven't completed the job, which is usually what needs to be done for a revenue recognition principle. So those are the concepts that, that come into play with the progress invoicing. We have, we have the issue of, I'd like to use the invoice to collect the money, 
but collecting the money could be separate from uh, the revenue the revenue recognition uh, concepts. So we'll take a, a look at a couple kind of examples. You can also have a situation where maybe you did the work in the past, but they're going to be paying you like in installment kind of situations. Now, if they're going to be paying you like in installments, again, you'd, you'd kind of like to set it up as, as a loan uh, type of situation. However, using progress invoicing can be can be useful because then you'd like to use the invoice to request the payments on a periodic uh, type of basis, even though the revenue recognition becomes kind of an, an issue that way, because in, in that case, you did the work already, you've, you've already done the work, and then you're going to be paid uh, in, in like installments in the future. If you just record the invoice, the revenue is going to be recognized when you get when you get paid, as opposed to kind of when you did the work, which you've already which you've already done the work. So you've got these issues. This invoice is great for collecting revenue, but you've got a difference between the revenue recognition concept and uh, and the billing time. So generally, what's going to happen with the invoice is you're going to go up top and and we're going to make an estimate, and then once once we have the estimate, we can basically. Uh, enter the invoice to pull in from the estimate. So I'll just show an example here and then I will delete it so it doesn't get in the way of our practice problem. So you don't have to enter this on your side if you don't want to, but I'm just going to say we have an estimate and let's make a new customer. I'm going to say it's customer one. I just made up a customer, customer one. And this happens on 427.23. Okay. And then down below, I'm going to say that we have, let's just keep it with the hours and we'll put 100,000 on the hours. And there's gonna be our estimate. So I'm gonna say save and close. So that doesn't actually record uh, anything to the financial statements. It's just an estimate. So if the estimate is accepted, then we might bill you know, the client an invoice for the estimate. So then when I invoice, what's gonna happen is I'll get this option. So I can say invoice, customer number one and now i've got this option uh pulling in from the estimate so i'm going to say i want to pull that information in and then i've got my choices on how i want to pull it in i can pull in the entire estimate but if i'm doing a progress invoicing type of system i might do some percentages so we might have come up with an agreement prior to this that i'm going to be charging you based on the based on the percent here so I then, I then might use the percent method, or I might use some kind of custom field, custom amount for each line item. So the percent might be fairly common. If I told them that I'm gonna be billing them 30% or whatever, then I can pull this information 30%. And every time the invoice comes up, I can then, I can then pull in the next percent going forward until we've completely uh, build out the estimate. Now, the issue, of course, here is that when I record this transaction, what's going to happen is it's going to record revenue at that point in time and accounts receivable. And then if the question is, is it proper for me to record that 30,000 of revenue because I may not have completed the job? And if you have a long term job, even under an accrual concept, Sometimes there's deviations from the normal revenue recognition principle, which is that we don't record revenue until the job's done. But if you have a long construction job or something like that, we might move to a percentage of completion kind of concept, for example, so that we can recognize a portion of the revenue basically as we go. And that, that's some of the issues that we'll get into in future presentations.